Welcome to the August 19th regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. If you could take a minute to silence your cell phone and then join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Hatfield, take a roll, please. Certainly. Uh, President Rausch? Here. Vice President McFarland? Here. Secretary Hatfield is here. Treasurer Lauterbach will not be here. Member Blasey? Here. Member Ringgold? Here. Member Horowitz? Present. Thanks, John. Um, before we get started, uh, just one thing that I did not catch in the agenda that was published, I'd like to consider um, somebody to make a motion for item 5.1 should actually be for action on the online component adoption um, instead of for information. I make a motion to change 5.1 from for information to action. Support. Support. Motion by Lazy. Support by Horowitz. Any questions? All right. All in favor of changing 5-1 from for information to for action, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries to change the agenda. Um, <clears throat> that takes us into item 2, which is a consent agenda. Item 2.1, approval of minutes from the July 15th, 2024 regular meeting and Ju July 20 excuse me, July 15th, 2024, closed session. Item 2.2, the below staff are being recommended for hire as listed in your agenda packet. Item 2.3, the below staff have announced their resignation effective on the dates as listed in your agenda packet. Item 2.4, the June 2024 financials will not be available for approval until the September Board of Education meeting. Item 2.5, approval is required to authorize the legal payments to the below list of professional legal fees uh, through law firm PC for $2,750, through law firm PC $477.50. Law firm for $275.70 and Taft Law Firm for $23.10. Those are items 2.1 through 2.5. We'll take a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Support. Motion by McFarland, support by Ringgold. Any questions or discussion? All in favor of approving items 2.1 through 2.5, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. <clears throat> Item three, Board of Education matters and presentation to the board. Um, item 3.1 for action, student A reinstatement. Jeff. Thank you. The board subcommittee of three board members, um, McFarland, Hatfield, and Horowitz and Associate Superintendent Jaster met on August 6, 2024 in regard to student A to consider his petition for reinstatement. It's the committee's recommendation that student A be immediately reinstated for the 24-25 academic year. This reinstatement would become effective Tuesday, August 20th, 2024. While expelled, student A had no further issues and has since met the expectations of the district to qualify for reinstatement. This action will require a roll call vote for the, from the board and a copy of the full resolution is in your board packet. Thanks, Jeff. Take a motion for item 3.1. I'll move for the reinstatement of student A. Support. Motion by McFarland, support by Hatfield. Further discussion or questions? It's always good when we see students perform to 
our expectations and come back to us. Um, John, this does require a roll call vote, please. All right. So, let's see, President Rausch? Yes. Vice President McFarland? Yes. Secretary Hatfield is a yes. Uh, Member Blasey? Yes. Member Ringgold? Yes. Member Horowitz? Absolutely. Unanimous. All right. Thank you. At this time, item number four is request to address the board. Um, first on my list is Mr. Bonadies. Welcome. Greetings. After a great presentation on a possible $300 plus million dollar bond issue late last year, crickets. After spending over $130,000 on a special election for the millage renewal, no visible plans forward. But you probably spend another $130,000 of taxpayer money on another special election in 2025 for the new bond issue instead of piggybacking on another election for free. And you will again fail to have the required vote at an open meeting for that level of expenditure. Hopefully, there is something going on in your closed subcommittee meetings. While you are planning, you might want to consider this fact. The U.S. is currently at below replacement value for the birth rate. So why are you believing you are going to maintain your student population? In the post-ESSER era, the habit of spending on non-core things may need to be reconsidered. More money has not led to higher test scores. And I will strongly oppose a collegiate level football stadium upgrade when a third grader can't read. Thank you. How is it on my list? Is there anybody else that would like to address the board at this time? Item five is curriculum instruction and assessment. Um, and I believe the committee just met today, so no minutes from the previous month, correct? Correct. So item 5.1 for action, online com <coughs> component adoption. Ken. Yeah, we have uh, two curriculums tonight, uh, one for accounting. Um, and one for the business, uh, the building trades, both CTE. Uh, both of them have gone through the process, were vetted by the teachers, uh, vetted by the curriculum department and by the IT department. Uh, this is uh, one of those situations, and sorry to have you change the agenda, where the handoff, we've had quite a bit of turnover <laughs> in the, the curriculum instruction and assessment department and handing all that off. This is one of the things that we found that uh, we had not dotted our I's and crossed our T's, so bring it to you tonight to approve. I don't know if you want to do it one at a time or if you do it together, that would be something for the board to discuss. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer. Thanks. I think we can do them together. Um, take a motion to approve, motion for item 5.1. So moved. Support. Motion by Hatfield. Support by McFarland. Any further discussion or question on the two online resources for one for accounting one and one for building trades? Any questions for Ken? All right. I'm glad that we figured out how to make sure that these were ready for Tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> we are scrambling right. as quickly as we can, and thank you to the board. I appreciate Thanks. your flexibility. Um, all in favor of approving item 5.1, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Item number six is finance facilities and operations. Um, 6.1 FFO study committee minutes from August 5th, 2024. Scott. Yes, I have the minutes. Uh, our meeting took place on August 5th, 2024 at the uh, administration building here in room nine. Uh, present in addition to myself were Brad, Penny, Anna, Mike, and Brian. Uh, number one, our summer project review. Mike Mogenberg provided the committee with a status update on projects that were completed over the summer. Uh, number two, an audit. 
The committee was given a general overview of the audit. After capturing additional variance in the budget, the district will add additional funds to its fund balance. A full report by Yo and Yo will be delivered to the FFO committee and Board of Education in September. Number three, Series 3 bond. Administration review the plans for the remaining Series 3 bond funds. The purchases include buses and various technology items. Number four, facility study. The committee was updated on feedback received from the community leader meetings. Our next FFO meeting will take place September 9th, 2024. Thanks, Scott. It's been exciting to see in all the pictures of the small projects that have been done around the district this summer. Yeah, so it was quite a presentation. Even just today, I saw the district post pictures of the welding um, students' lockers up, upgraded and it's just exciting to see yeah, every, I, every project get completed. I think during that, that presentation from Mr. Mogenberg, there were 74 pictures of projects before and afters and, and along the way it was really an impressive um, undertaking that, that they uh, got all that done this summer. Yeah. I will I'll just affirm that if you're not on social media watching us, it's really great to be able to see all of the updates and things kind of happening in real time in that way. So thank you. Item 6.2 for action gifts totaling $34,665. Anna. Uh, as you stated, there are two items totaling $34,665 that require you accepting on behalf of the board this evening. The first is 24665 from the Midland High Music Parents Association for a sound system for three rooms, and the second is for $10,000 from the Nicholas Family Foundation for Midland High placing second place in the Nicholas Innovation Awards. We would request that you approve accepting these gifts this evening. Thanks. I'll take a motion for item 6.2. I'll move to <coughs> accept gifts totaling $34,665. I'll support. Motion by Horowitz, support by Hatfield. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor of approving um, the gifts in item 6.2 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Item 6.3 for information, gifts totaling $1,750. Anna? For information only, there are seven gifts this evening totaling $1,750, representing gifts to the Midland High football program, as well as to the Maxwell Music Memorial in mem memory of Barbara Music Short. As is tradition, all donors are going to be recognized in the credits of this evening's broadcast and also through board correspondence sent on your behalf. We are grateful for our community support of our students and our programs. Thank you. I know that first guy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> saw that. <laughs> That's a very neat gift. Thank you to the Blazy family and all the other families on this list. It's very neat. Um, item seven, human resources um, for information retirements. Jeff, 7.1. Thank you. <clears throat> Only one to announce this evening. Uh, for information, a below staff member has announced their resignation effective at the date listed. So, Mr. Thomas Evans, H.H. Dow High School, uh, his effective retirement date was August 8th, 2024. Yeah. And I'll note that there were no um, study committee meeting minutes because we did not meet um, since the last board meeting. <laughs> Item number eight, correspondence. Um, from the Board of Education uh, to the following organizations listed in the agenda packet. Item nine, scheduled activities for information. All meetings are regular meetings of the Board of, Info Board of Education and begin at 7 p.m. as listed in the agenda packet with our next meeting being September 16th. Which takes us to item number 10, um, closed session I will, for consultation with legal counsel regarding pending litigation. So I'll take a motion for item number 10. I'll move that we enter closed session 
uh, for consultation with legal counsel regarding pending litigation as permitted under MCL 15.268, Section 8E. Support. Motion by McFarland, support by Hatfield. And John, do you mind doing roll call, please? Yep. President Rausch? Yes. Uh, Vice President McFarland? Yes. Secretary Hatfield is a yes. Uh, Member Blazy? Yes. Member Ringgold? Yes. Member Horwitz? Yes. And then we will come back for study session, uh, section 11. At this time, we'll move into closed session. Thank you. So we'll move back into open session now um, out of item 10. Ann? Yep, I will move um, on the Evans matter to extend our counsel their authority to settle the pending litigation. Support? So we have a new, we have a motion by Horowitz to extend counsel um, authority to settle a legal mat pending legal matter and support by Hatfield. I think this does require a roll call vote. So, okay. John? Uh, President Rausch? Yes. Vice President McFarland? Yes. Secretary Hatfield is yes. Treasurer Lauterbach is not here. Uh, Member Blazy? Yes. Member Ringgold? Yes. Member Horowitz? Yes. All right, unanimous. Item carries 6-0. Um, next up is, is the Section 11 study session discussion, 11.1 .1, points of clarification. Any board members have any points of clarification from the meeting tonight to discuss? Um, I just have two things to, to note. One is um, our board obviously operates with subcommittees, which um, each of us serve on various subcommittees. Each subcommittee has three board members on them. The study committees are posted on our website for each of the, f the dates and times when we do meet, and those are open meetings. Um, additionally, we do not make any decisions at those meetings as there are only three board members there and they only make recommendations in this meeting. Um, second, just give an update on our bond and where we're at in that process. Um, I want to start by just addressing a couple things. You know, any time that we talk about a bond, it's talking about spending money. And I want to address it. I don't think anybody on this board takes that endeavor lightly. We recognize that many of our community members live sometimes paycheck to paycheck or on a fixed income. And when we're talking about taxes, it potentially creates a hardship for our community members. Um, however, at the same time as a board, we have to think about the long-term vision of the district and do what's right for our students and also think about what's most fiscally responsible in the management long-term of the 11 buildings in our fleet. And <clears throat> as such, having 11 buildings and allowing them all to become over 100 years old would not be the financially responsible thing to do either and creating a, a cliff for ourselves. And I was reflecting, you know, as to where we're at in our process and reflecting on the fact that, you know, 
over, a little over 10 years ago, I think it was Jerry Wasserman at the time was sitting in this seat, and I think, Scott, you were on the board at that time. And, you know, that board was faced with a dilemma of what do we do um, with declining enrollment and was in the middle of a much different scenario than we face. Fortunately, um, we don't have declining enrollment. We have a very stable enrollment. And I think, um, you know, we've seen that we've been able to be extremely successful in stemming the tide and, and actually creating opportunities for growth and capturing more and more growth, especially through the development of pre-primary center and additional programming. So we've not only stemmed the tide, but created the opportunity for success in which we can grow. Um, so, you know, in some ways we stand on the shoulder of giants that came before us, and um, we're in this really unique position in, in which we have assets <clears throat> in our district that meet the needs of today to some extent, but at the end of the day, there's still facilities that um, were designed for the curriculum of the 1950s and 60s. And we've learned a lot since then about how students learn and interact and grow. And we have to be responsible to continue to get student growth and achievement and one of the aspects of that growth and achievement is what do our students go to school in every day? Um, you know, so <clears throat> when we set out on this, this journey maybe 12 to 18 months ago, we asked uh, you know, members of our FFO committee to start working with our building administrators and the the staff that use the building every day, buildings every day, um, and work with construction experts and address, you know, what they saw as critical needs. Um, as a board, we captured community input through um, an equity audit, leadership profile report during the superintendent search which led to that initial board presentation that we all reviewed in December. And, you know, I was kind of reflecting on some of the stuff that we reviewed in December. And the seven priorities that our district <clears throat> that really came through from our community and those interactions for the district, again, were continuing to enhance safety and security replacing critical infrastructure, address aging facilities, really addressing facility utilization and maybe said differently, you know, how do we meet the students where they are and make sure that that learning environment works for them, expand pre-K offerings and continuing to grow that part of our, our educational system, improve educational program spaces, and then finally, the seventh priority was upgrade arts, athletics, and play. And when we looked at those seven priorities, our FFO committee you know, came back to the board in December and presented, I think it was almost 80 slides, a really comprehensive report on, on that. Um, throughout the spring, we, really, we said, let's pause and really make sure that we've got our um, operating millage in place and focused on that to make sure that the community did not get the two confused because they are two completely different budgets. Um, and now that we've had overwhelming support by our community in that operating millage, now is the time to come back with the start of school year and really get our community engaged in, in what they want to see in a potential bond. So. As we move forward, um, we will begin, you'll start to see a lot of communication on um, 
how that process will play out, and Penny can help me with this part. She and I and some of the other members of our administration team met with um, one of the firms that will help us put on these community listening sessions and community input sessions, but be hosting various parent focus groups, community focus groups, and really try to get real feedback from our community on if, what, and how big uh, a bond could be and what um, we want to see out of that potential future bond. Uh, you know, the, when the FFO committee came and presented to the board in December, we saw some of the potential outcomes of what that bond could be. They're really exciting. This gives us a chance to, to dream about how do, we, how do we not only address the needs of our district, but really springboard us or catapult us into growing our students um, from an achievement and growth standpoint. Um, so it's, it's a really exciting time for our district um, to engage in what we wanna be. Um, so really excited to capture the input of our community really you know when we when we all contribute to an idea it's going to be a better idea and outcome altogether so um would you know if if any of the members of the ffo committee have more input that they want to share or penny maybe add a little bit more on kind of those engagement sessions um appreciate any additional Input. Yeah, I'd love to hear from board members, but I will add, just for clarity, in September we'll have those focus groups, and those will be by invitation with real intention of gathering um, people who are not necessarily all like-minded. We want to hear from a representative group, and some of those will be actual random selection, uh, not hand-picked groups. And then surveys that will be very broadly cast across our community, and we'll make sure that everyone has an opportunity and has access to those surveys uh, and we need people to respond to that survey that's how we're going to get a pulse of what's possible and that insight and information are part of the data points that you all will get ultimately through a recommendation to make a decision so stay tuned september uh, we'll we'll begin those thank you pretty well okay all right. All set? Yeah, I so, have comments yep. on unrelated topics when you're finished. Go ahead. Great. So guess what? Tomorrow, kids are back. We're so excited. Uh, but before we really celebrate tomorrow, the 20th, our first day of school, I want to just uh, offer a quick recap of this past week. We welcome staff back at an opening session, and thank you to the board members who were able to be there. The staff noticed and very much appreciated your engagement. So it was a really great start to the year, uh, high energy, lots of enthusiasm uh, for the, just to welcome kids back and have a great year. One thing that we did at our opening session, as we typically do, is start with celebrations, and I wanted to highlight a few of those tonight. We recognized, and Jeff does this for us, uh, he reads their names one by one, we won't have him do that tonight, but we recognized our recent retirees, and just acknowledge the amazing service of, of our teachers and um, you know moments of gratitude for that. We shifted then into recognizing our new hires and this is quite a great list as well. And while we are excited that we're attracting great talent from across the state, we also took a moment to celebrate those who are MPS graduates and are returning to teach in our classrooms. And that was a special uh, celebration from the crowd. I think lots of applause. Je uh, Jeff, help me remember, are there four or five? Four. Great. We've had some of the yeah. We also recapped where we are with our Teachers for Tomorrow program that we've implemented, again, to try to get young people excited and interested in teaching careers. Always at our opening session, uh, highlights are our Distinguished Service Awards, and you can see those uh, smiling beautiful faces on your screen. We recognize Lori Holderby, Karen Welser, Angela Kubeka, and Melissa Wagner. All were 
absolutely surprised. We did a great job of keeping those a secret this year and recognized uh, them for their service. We also honored our Gerstacker Excellence in Teaching Award recipients. And each year we have four of those. We had an extra bonus one this year. Uh, so Melissa Grunder, Christine Gr Brillhart, Erica Halleck, Kimberly Outnan, and Mark uh, was surprised. Well, right up until he wasn't. <laughs> if, you, if you weren't there for that part, we had the awards all lined up and I guided him wrong to start on the wrong end. So uh, when the first recipient was coming to the stage, he grabbed the award that had his name on it. And then he looked at me and I looked at him and like, just put that back in that cool man. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing to see here. Um, but we were, we were thrilled to honor all five of these distinguished teachers and are thankful for their service to our organization. So it was a, a lovely morning uh, and it was NCAPT. I had some help here from Anne in awarding our first Administrator Inspiring Excellence Award to Kara Stark. I'll remind you all of these awards are open for nominations to colleagues, parents, public, uh, students can nominate and we have a committee selected of peers and we did the same thing. We modeled this selection after Gerstacker and Kara was absolutely surprised and I appreciated Anne uh, since she has a personal connection helping us award this. So it was a great morning of celebration and again, very enthusiastic to welcome our students back. Thanks Sarah for those slides. A couple of other comments I'll just offer. Uh, Lots of open houses and curriculum nights already happening. Our team has been out visiting those and parents are so thankful for the opportunity to get in and see, see their classrooms and find their way around. So we appreciate the family and parent engagement that we've had and look forward to continuing to advance that this year. Uh, bus safety, I just wanna take a moment to remind everyone in the room and anyone who might be listening, those big yellow buses are on the roads tomorrow just a little extra patience, a little heightened awareness. We have many students who still walk to school, so please be mindful at crosswalks. We're thankful for our crossing guards uh, who are out there and our student crossing patrols who will be ready to go making sure everyone gets to school safely. A little extra patience in the drop-off lines as well. I know it's easy to get frustrated when things aren't moving as quickly as we want them to. Everyone's doing their best, working the kinks out these first few weeks. On that same note of bus safety, thanks to Jeff, we hosted a transportation department workshop last week and it was really well received. It was an opportunity for our bus drivers and transportation department to practice some scenarios, just like our teachers often have to practice safety scenarios. We appreciate Oakland Sheriff's Department who were our expert facilitators driving up here and offering this training. We opened it to the other county schools and we're pleased that they sent bus drivers as well. This really stemmed from the initial connection we made with our friends in Oxford when we went down to visit and learn some things about school safety. This was sort of the next progression and something very different and new for us. And uh, community partners, our um, other school partners have expressed gratitude and hope that we can do this on maybe in every other year cycle. So really good training. I want to make sure our kids are safe in school and on the bus. I want to remind board members that tomorrow we have a workshop. This is not a public um, open meeting. It's a workshop for board members. It is hosted by the Midland County ESA. It will be over at the Longview facility. We do have it posted on our website and on the door, but I just want to remind everyone no action will happen at this meeting. We're not convening a formal meeting. There's no public comment. So we appreciate the ESA hosting. Uh, the Michigan Association of School Boards is actually facilitating this workshop. The topic is uh, superintendent evaluation and this meets the new legal requirement that board members are trained in how to use the new evaluation tool. That starts at 6 p.m. I believe the ESA is offering dinner at 5.30 if you wanna show up a bit early. Communications, you may have noticed, I see some smiles that we've launched one piece of our new communication uh, plan, a new version of our community newsletter, Forward Together. This does replace the superintendent communique. It's streamlined. It's intended to really 
tighten our message of the things that we want our school community to know. We love the celebrations that used to be in the communique, the photos, all the great things happening, but the feedback we received over time was that it just became a little too cumbersome and it was sort of the messaging was lost in all of these photos. So we will be using our social media platforms to really push out all of those celebrations and awesome events in a much more timely fashion rather than waiting until Monday. We're welcoming feedback about this new newsletter. Thanks. Uh, so far, good feedback. Twice a month, also because we're going to be using these other channels to share information. And we're going to be supporting our schools in enhancing their communication. Uh, we have some pockets of excellence. Everyone is doing something which we appreciate, but how can we get that more localized communication directly to the families who need to know it most for those schools? So feedback is welcome. If you hear any feedback uh, from folks in the community, please feel welcome to share that. Uh, and we already talked about facilities and you've covered all the points I wanted to make on that. We just encourage people to be engaged and when that survey comes out, uh, to please participate. We will commit to, to some updates at each of our board meetings here on out if it's nothing more than just where we are in that process. So kids are back tomorrow. That's really the highlight of all of this. We're so excited to welcome them back. Teachers are ready. Classrooms are looking phenomenal. Uh, we will all be out in the morning helping wherever we're needed. Traffic flow, uh, lockers in the middle schools, whatever it is, we'll be there. And uh, just excited to see those happy faces. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Penny. I will take a motion to adjourn. Support. Support. Any opposed? Stand adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>